Hi folks, today we're going to have a look at the waves questions from the higher physics paper in 2017. And we're going to start with this open-ended question, which tells us that some motorways have variable speed limits with overhead information boards displaying the maximum speed allowed. This system is designed to keep the traffic flowing and to avoid congestion. In this system, the flow of traffic is observed and the maximum speed to be displayed is displayed using speed equals frequency times wavelength. Use your knowledge of physics to comment on this system for determining the maximum speed to be displayed. So the flow of traffic is effectively the frequency, which is the number of cars passing the detector per second. And ideally, we want this to remain constant. The wavelength here is the distance between the cars. And we want this to not get too small or else they collide. However, by decreasing the speed of a car, it can drive closer to the one in front. So this is our formula, speed equals frequency times wavelength. If we reduce the speed, then we have a smaller distance between the cars. And that maintains the frequency of the cars. And it means that the cars move more freely through the traffic. Number six, the visible spectrum of light emitted by a star is observed to contain a number of dark lines. The dark lines occur because certain wavelengths of light are absorbed when light passes from through atoms in the star's outer atmosphere. The diagram shows some of the energy levels for a hydrogen atom. For the energy level shown in the diagram, identify the electron transition that would lead to the absorption of a photon with the highest frequency. So we have this formula, E equals HF, energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. And that tells us that the largest energy will give us the highest frequency of photon. So the absorption of the highest photon will be the biggest energy gap on the diagram, which in this case is from E0 up to E3. B, an electron makes the transition from the energy levels E1 to E3, determine the frequency of the photon absorbed. So we're going from E1 to E3. Our formula is E equals H times F, and the energy is the difference between the energy level of E1 and E3. H is Planck's constant, which we get on our data sheet, 6.63 times 10 to the power minus 34. So our frequency is the difference in energy between the energy levels divided by Planck's constant, which gives us a frequency of 6.12 times 10 to the power 14 hertz. Number 10. An experiment is carried out to determine the wavelength of light from a laser. Explain in terms of waves how a maxima is formed. So a maximum is formed, like here, where one of the waves has travelled a whole number of waves further than another. And therefore, the waves arrive at their destination in phase, meaning that Two peaks line up, two troughs line up, and so we get constructive interference. So when two waves meet in phase, i.e. crest to crest or trough to trough, constructive interference occurs. Part B, the experiment is carried out with four gratings. The separation of the slits, D, is different in each grating. The angle between the central maximum and the first order maximum, theta, produced by each grating is measured. The results are used to produce a graph of sine theta against 1 over d. And there you can see the graph with four data points and the line of best fit passing through. Determine the wavelength of the light from the laser used in this experiment. So, how can we do this? 
Well, we have this formula, d sine theta equals m lambda. And in this case, m is 1, because we're dealing with the first order maxima. So d sine theta equals lambda. Now, if I rearrange that formula a little bit, I get sine theta equals lambda times 1 over d. I'm basically dividing both sides by d. And your maths teacher will probably have told you about this formula, y equals mx plus c. And that's the equation for any straight line. In this case, the straight line has the y values as sine theta. And it has the x values as 1 over d, which means the m, which is the gradient of the line, is equal to the wavelength of the light. So, gradient, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Pick two points on the line that go through the corner of a box, ideally. I'll go with these two. I insert these numbers into my formula. And I get this value, six point, sorry, 4.67 times 10 to the power of minus 7 meters, or 467 nanometers. Part two, determine the angle theta produced when a grating with a spacing d of two times 10 to the power of minus six meters is used with the laser. So we know that d is two times 10 to the power of minus six meters. So one over d is one over that, which is 0 0.5 times 10 to the power of six. So we can look on our graph to find that. It's there. Read across and we find my sine theta for a value of 1 over d of 0 0.5 times 10 to the power 6 is 2.4. So if that's sine theta, then I can find the value for theta, the angle, by inverse sining 0 0.24, which gives me an angle of 14 degrees. Suggest two improvements that could be made to the experiment to improve reliability. Well, a useful thing to do in any experiment is to repeat your measurements and find a mean that reduces the random uncertainty and improves the reliability of the experiment. We could use more values of D to get more data points. They've only done four different um, diffraction gratings with different values of D, if they do, did 5 or 6 or 7 or 8, they would have more lines plotted on their graph and therefore they'd be able to draw a more reliable line of best fit. And they could use, rather than measuring the angle to the maxima, the first order maxima, they could try and measure the angle to the second order maxima or the third or the fourth and so on. That will give us a larger angle to measure. And therefore, the reading uncertainty on a larger angle will be a smaller percentage uncertainty. And that will improve the reliability of the experiment as well. And number 11, the use of analogies from everyday life can help better understanding of physics concepts. A car moving from a smooth surface to a rough surface, for example, a road to sand, can be used as an analogy for the refraction of light. Use your knowledge of physics to comment on this analogy. Well, as a car's wheels enter the sand, they are caused to slow down. So, in this case, the car's right wheels slow, while the car's left wheels keep moving quickly until they too enter the sand. That causes a change in direction. So, the slowing down of the car causes it to change direction. And that's the same with waves as they pass from, for example, air into glass. The right-hand side of the wave enters the glass first, that causes it to slow down. The left-hand side of the wave keeps moving. And that, again, causes a change in direction. So the slowing down of the waves causes them to change direction. And this is very comparable to the case of the car on the road going into the sand uh, at the verge. 
So I hope that was helpful and I hope you come back and listen to some more another time.